you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. I know we've been gone a while, but we are back. And I couldn't think of another artist who I'd rather come back to than the incomparable, very talented Miss Angie Stone. Miss Stone, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to the Bring Thank Back you. Soul Music Podcast. Thank you for having me, man. This is so dope. I appreciate you. Not a problem. Welcome. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. Trust me. Uh, I've been a huge fan of yours for years. Um, the uh, first you. album that I got of yours was the uh, the Mahogany Soul album, which okay, still one of my favorite albums to this day. Wow. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that, so to speak. We're here to talk about your new album. Uh, let me get that on camera. Love Language, which I also love. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So before we get into that, though, um, I know most people are familiar with Angie Stone, but just for those who aren't, uh, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Well, Angie Stone, before I was Angie Stone, I was Angie B, uh, formerly with the group The Sequence, the first female hip hop group to do an original rap grade, uh, record, the first females of Sugar Hill Records, uh, went on to join a group called Vertical Hole. After 12 years with Vertical Hole, I stepped into a solo career uh, as Angie Stone. And uh, that's what you have right now. I've been doing this is my 10th uh, studio album. I'm super excited about it. And I have to say that it's right up there with Mahogany Soul, which I'm proud of because that was a hard album to top. And for the first time in all these years, people are saying, I like this just as much I like as I like Mahogany Soul, which makes me feel like, yes, I finally got back to the business. All right. And I can attest to uh, how great this album is. I just couldn't stop listening to it. And uh, really, yeah, um, All I Need is probably my favorite Ooh. track. <laughs> Off the album, I love that, but all of them are great, and you have such. It's so a funny you said that because I was just listening to all I need. I mean, that's I just in between breaks. That's the song I listen to. Oh, it's really? Just, well, it, it sticks with you. Yes, yes. Uh, Thank you. No problem. I love the whole album though, but that one sort of just that one just caught I know. me. But I also love the title track too, "Love Language." I love that. As yes. Well. Um, Thank you. 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 Uh. Uh, true to the game because all the ones that I pick, you're picking. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I can't sing I like you, one, but I mean it's just crazy. <laughs> I wish I could sing like you, but that's that's oh, not you can. Happen. Come on, that's not gonna happen. Um, but let's get into this album. Um, well, let me let me, let me back up just a little bit. The Mahogany Soul album. Do you still yeah. have people come to you and say, "Man, I still love that album"? Oh yeah, all the time. You know, I, I took a listen to it maybe six months ago, threw it in, CD deck, and I'm like, dang, that album was really good. Because I, you know, I had removed myself from it for so long uh, that when I listened to it, it actually, you know, made me realize that, okay, I can see why they say it was a good album, because it's a vibe. It's something that when you put it on, you can go from one track to the next and feel like, okay, I ain't got to skip no songs. It really, you know, connects with me, so... This is kind of where love language is. Okay. Did you think it was going to have this kind of staying power all these years no, later? No, I didn't no? think it was going to have. I thought I was done. I had hung up my my uh, microphones, and I was I was done with the industry because at my age, I'm like, these people ain't checking for no Angie Stone at this point. And then I had to be checking for me. I had to say, okay, what kind of music do you want to listen to? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's enough about Mahogany Stone. We have a new new project here. Tell us about this uh this project. And you said you you just said that you thought you were done in the business. Um, yeah, because you know the game has changed so much. I'm not social media savvy like most people are. Uh, I didn't. I, I just did not get the level of comfortability with getting on that internet and doing all. I have you gotta have patience for that. Number one. And I've been grinding so hard all my life that when it when it when it was time to slow down and do this, 
like I ain't got time to do that. You know, it was it, it was one of those kind of things where you didn't really realize how important it is and was and all that stuff. And so I kind of let go of it and just like I I can't do that until I find out there are people that will help you with you know your social media and get you back in the game. And so when it when it became something that I could relate to on that level, I said, okay, it's not that bad. I start actually having fun, acting crazy on TikTok and doing little stuff like that. But um, for the most part, I just, you know, well, I won't say I'm lazy because I'm one of the hardest working people in the game. But I will say that, you know, my tolerance for certain things is like zilch. Mm, okay. So but when did I, you... I love great music. And so and for that, I, I, I bent myself a little strangely just in order to make another album that I felt comfortable with. Okay. When did you decide to uh, to do this particular project? You know, when I did this album, it was literally about three weeks before it came out. Mm. I took two weeks to do this record. Two, two weeks. weeks. I had two wow. weeks to do this record. My manager said, listen, we got a label interested in us. They want to do this for and We got to do this record. And we got two weeks to do it. I'm like, mission impossible. I don't feel like going to the studio and it. It's the end. You got to do it. I don't want to do it. I was being super stubborn. And he said, we got two weeks. And he says, I'm going to tell you how important it is. Put the label on the phone. And they said, you give me this record. I promise you, we will go harder for you than any label has ever gone for you. And I'm like, mm, I've heard that before. Uh, so I actually trusted Walter Millsap. He flew in town. We stayed in the studio morning, noon, and night. In two weeks, we had it done. On the, the last day of the second week, we had one song that we didn't get finished. It didn't make the album. Okay. I was devastated. And uh, he said, no, we got to turn it in in two weeks. And we're not going to have any reason for them not to push this out. Well, we turned it in. When we turned it in, I can honestly tell you that it was so well received they called me and said you'll be getting a nice check the end of the year i'm like okay <laughs> i like that talk so you know i was just happy that i was able to get it done and um i have to tell you during the entire process i thought i had the worst vocals in the world i wasn't happy with any of the vocals and now that i listen back i'm like okay it wasn't so bad yeah. i'm hard i'm very critical on myself and it sound like it sound beautiful to me now, but then I don't like it. Mm. Like Angie, trust me, you are gonna like it in the end. I don't like it now. I don't want to put that out. I was very hard to deal with because I just I think I think I was nervous that I was gonna flop. So I was harder on myself than I should have been. Yeah, it sound like you have just very high standards and. Uh... You know, you don't yeah, want to put out anything I, that you I figure broke. that they might be oh. mediocre. So, <laughs> but I, trust me, it's not mediocre. It actually is a really, really good album. Thank um, you. How did you come up with so many songs in a very short uh, There's space a team of, time? of people that work with me. Candice, uh, Teak Underdo, Walter Millsap, Balewa. Um, there are a team of people that get together uh, for the last three or four albums I've worked with the same people and mm -hmm. when we go in we go in as a team all right what you got what you got what you got what do you think about this okay and work on the bridge on this we got it I mean it's like a little factory over there so when we start churning out songs and we don't like them we just push them past but if they come in and we like them we work on them we get them done and that's it I, okay. I love the the, the formula. Okay. Well, if it works, keep doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so this album is out just in time for uh summer. I think it's been out for a little over a week now, maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay. And we uh, got three. We had three point five million streams the first week. Oh. Um, you know that first just, week is always important. So. Yeah, I was like, we we got what? <laughs> It just started going up and up and up and up. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we just shot two videos last week. We did Good mm -hmm. Man. And I love the feeling, which you guys should be getting in another few days or so. 
Okay. So I'll be eager to know what you think about it. Oh, well, most definitely. Um, now, speaking of the uh, summer coming up, are you going out and supporting this album by touring? Or? I absolutely am. I'll be in Albany, New York this Saturday. Uh, when I come back, I have uh, Atlanta. I'll be doing Juneteenth uh, in Miami and in uh, Chicago. So, okay. I, uh, you know, things are starting to trickle in. And I think people are starting to get the Angie fever again. It's just, it's new music. It's fresh. It's, you know, I think that the industry, we have a way of sometimes overkill, doing too many of the same artists in the same market. And now it's like fresh babies come in and they're kind of, you know, they're throwing it out there. We're just taking it one day at a time. I heard that. Um, because you've been uh, in the business um, so long, I, I didn't realize, first of all, I saw another interview that you did. I didn't realize you started off in hip hop. Yeah. I funk was shocked you. when I heard Right that. on up. We're going to funk you right on up. You don't remember that? I do. I didn't know that was you, though. They get up, get up, get up, sit back. Yeah, Angie B. Oh. I know. God has been so good to us. We've been blessed. Black don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I have to uh, shout out Sylvia Robinson. God rest her soul. She took a chance on us. We were teenagers. Uh, we got started in 1979. That's mm. when I first got in the entertainment field and been going strong ever since. Mm. Okay. I, I know I was thinking back when the first time I heard of you, uh, it had to be during that Mahogany uh, Soul album. I was riding with an ex-girlfriend and uh, she put this album on. I was like, who is this? First solo album. I've yeah. been with two groups prior to that. Yeah, this album, the uh, Mahogany Soul album. And I said, who is uh -huh. this? And she said, oh, that's Angie Stone. You never heard of Angie Stone? I was like, nah. But uh, I immediately went out and got the album, though. So, uh, well, let so, me ask you: Have you heard? Had you heard of Vertical Hold? I probably heard a song. You remember the song? Groups. Seems you much too busy for me, and I can't stand it. Seems you much too busy these uh, days. I have to hear. I can't it. I'm not... handle it. We had a song called "Seems You Much Too Busy" on the A and M chart. The group mm. was Vertical Hold. Okay. Um, if you go through YouTube and pull up uh, Soul Train, you can see us there. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. But I okay. mean, mm -hmm, Vertical oh. Hole and prior to that was the sequel. Okay. So I've been around. Yeah. That leads me to my next question. Uh, you've been around um, a while. What do you think of the state of music now? Well, I just think what goes around comes around. I think music is recycled over and over. Uh, the only thing that annoys me with the music is a lot of these artists do remakes mm -hmm. and the new generation uh, uh, is never educated on who the original artist is. Um, a lot of the people think Mary J. Black was the first one to do Sweet Thing uh, when, that, when in fact Rufus and Shaka Khan did it first. I just think if you're going to cover a song, it's just like with, with my song, uh, No More Rain in This Cloud. Uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips did neither one of us. I just think if we don't educate our people, they will never know. So we have to take some responsibility and accountability for telling and teaching. And I just feel like, you know, the, the game is always going to grow. It's always going to be a, a form of respect and compliment to redo somebody's song, but take the initiative to share the inspiration for the song. Yeah, I so agree. I just, you know, other than that, the state of the game is what it is. We'll never forget greatness because we always redo it. We rely on it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so funny you say that too, because uh last week I was listening to uh Rich Girl by Hall and Oates and my wife said, you know uh -huh. that was done by Nina Simone, right? And I was like, yeah, nah, I didn't know that. So I went back and listened to Nina Simone version. It was it was actually really good, better than Hall and Oates version. I said, okay, uh -huh. I didn't know that. So I can understand what you're talking about because I wouldn't have known that unless my wife had pointed it out to me. Right. Okay. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, it is. Music is um, is everlasting, I guess. Think about how many people don't know D'Angelo did Cruz and that Smokey Robinson did it first. Right, 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 <laughs> right. You've, um, you've also written for a number of different artists. Um, is that um, is that something you're still doing? What writing for other other artists, musicians? 
I used to do a lot of writing. Um, so much was stolen from me, taken from me, mm. taken for granted. Um, I kind of shied away from it more so than not because you never want to argue about your creativity. And when you got to argue about who did what and you know what you did, it kind of, it, it, it can make you sick. So I kind of stopped writing for other people. I generally write for myself. If I do write with other people, it's for me. And that way I'm still in somewhat of a, a bit of control of it. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, when somebody take your stuff and go their way with it, yeah. first thing they do is telling other people, oh, I wrote this song. I remember when I did No More Rain in This Cloud. I had written this song. Uh, I was just about finished. And a young man came into the studio um, and he said, oh, my God, oh, my God, I love this song. Please, you got to give me a line on it. You got to give me a line on it. I'm like, song is finished. We got to the bridge, listening, and he took one line of the song and um, switched some word or something in the thing because he was determined to get on the song. And it blew my mind one day when we was, he was getting on a war for something. And uh, they credited him for writing all these hit songs for Anita Baker. And he penned the song No More Rain in the for Angie Stone. I was sick to my stomach because I'm like, <clears throat> and, I, I, and what they do is they let everybody believe that they actually wrote the song and the, the truth is you begged to get a line on the song. I let you get a line on the song, but you took that one line and you ran with it. And so you tell everybody, oh yeah, I, that's one of my songs. Mm. So it kind of, you know, it hurt my feelings, number one. And number two, I just, you know, I, I don't sit well with the lie. That was just, instead of saying I was so gracious because she allowed me to get on a song, a song was supposed to tell the truth. But no, I wrote that song. And I was like, no, you didn't. Mm. <laughs> but it, it 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 is what it is. So I don't generally write from too many people anymore. Okay. Well, that's a good reason why. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you, let me back up just a little bit. Now, you grew up in uh, South Carolina? Yes. Okay. Who were some of the artists that you uh, admired or liked or... Uh, I'm growing uh, up. Look, I admire my dad. My dad was in a quartet group uh, <laughs> that practiced at my house every day. Um, that's where I got my chops from. But most of my inspiration came from gospel groups like the gospel keynotes, the Canton Spirituals, Shirley Caesar. Uh, there used to be a lot of gospel shows at the Masonic Temple in South Carolina. And then, of course, as I became a teenager, I fell in love with Aretha Franklin. Um, Betty, uh, uh, Betty Wright. Yes, Betty Wright. Um, uh, it's just with so many, uh, Ann Wilson. It was so many artists that kind of just stuck to me that made me, uh, you know, want to do music. I basically follow people that had my tone of voice. Mm. Gladys Knight, you know, Betty Wright, Shaka Khan. All of those people had those warm altos that uh that I could you know relate to oh, and okay. people's um uh, oh it's been such a long long time seems like I got you off of my mind what's the song what's that lady but I can't thought of you she sang the song Misty Blue. Mm-hmm. I know who you're talking about, but I just yeah. can't so, picture you know, that. All those people were kind of in my genre. Okay. At the all time, right. I was a young girl. I was like Lauren Hill when Lauren was listening to Roberta Flack. I was like her listening to all of these artists. Mm, okay. All right. Well, we're coming up on uh, our time here. Uh, let people know how they can reach out to you. Yes, you can reach me on all social media platforms at the Angie Stone across the board. Um, my music can be downloaded on Apple Music, or you can go in the stores and buy it. 
Of course, you got Spotify, you got all streaming platforms that you can listen to the album uh, on. Uh, but more importantly, Angie, the Angie Stone, the official Angie Stone site is up and running. Check me out. There's a lot going on. So you can see when it will be near you in your local hometown. So we can chop it up. I'm yeah. super excited about hooking up with my fans and just the audience in general. So don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah. And I can't wait for you to come to Southern California so I can come see you. Um, all right. I, I look forward to meeting you as well. All right. Miss okay. Stone, Angie Stone. Appreciate you. All right, you. honey. All right. And don't forget Take to get out yourself. there. Enjoy that album. Oh, I, I've already have. <laughs> so, okay. Thank another you. classic from Angie Stone. Love Language is out already. Uh, Miss Stone, appreciate you. All right, babe. Take care. Uh, I'm going to get my little break and listen to my song. Okay. All right. And that's all right, Angie honey. Stone on the Bring Thank Back you. Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Angie Stone. You can find out more about Angie on her website at angiestone.com, as well as all her social media sites. And don't forget to check out the article we did on Angie Stone in our new, brand new magazine, Bring Back Soul Music Magazine. The link is below. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Again, we started a brand new magazine called the Bring Back Soul Music Magazine. The link is below. It's a free copy. Go and check it out. All right, that's it for today. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. <laughs>